Hello folks, Junkie Rock 13 here. Um, everything vaping related and on my YouTube channel. And now I'll be hosting the show on Alexa TV. My name is Junkie Rock 13. Real name is Ross Sanders, and I'm bringing you a review today of the most talked about APV on the market, probably, is the Zenesis. Um, I believe it's the most sought after. Everybody's trying to get a Zenesis. Uh, the ones that have Zenesis don't want to sell Zenesis. But it's a very nice device, and I'm here to give you a little look at my standard and it is number 120 and uh, we're going to take a look at it and wrap a coil so it's going to be a little bit longer video but um, maybe some of my tips and tricks can help somebody out if they're having issues with their Genesis um, take a look at it this is the Genesis standard Alrighty folks, so here is the first process of making the mesh for the Zenesis standard. Um, the um, piece of mesh that I'm starting out with is a 400 stainless steel mesh that is uh, cut into a rectangle size of 50 millimeters this way, 30, 35 this way. Um, I have found that this works for me. Uh, there's different sizes for different um, devices and different Genesis atomizers, but this size right here works for me with the Genesis standard. I'm going to first off, okay, um, I'm going to fold over right over here. I'm going to fold over just a little tiny bit maybe less than an eighth about an eighth of an inch try to get it as small as possible I'm gonna take my fingernail and crease it down what that does is gives me a nice uh, flat working edge for the outside so there is no phrase of stainless steel that will be shorting out so there you go you can see that it is folded over right there. Now I'm going to take a standard toothpick and put it right here. I start right there and then what I do is I just roll down. And that gives me like a nice little bend in the, the mesh and then just start rolling it up. make sure it's nice and even on the toothpick now what I like to do is what I'm when I'm wrapping this I like pulling towards the outside so I'm like stretching the mesh out towards the edges so if you see my fingers I'm pulling this way pulling both of my fingers that way so just keep on Get it nice and tight around this toothpick. And that's what I end up with. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is zoom out real quick. Just light in my propane torch and a glass of water and light this up. And 
now I'm going to take a paper clip and stick it in to the mesh. The reason why I'm using a paper clip is the other day I burned my finger making a mesh. Let me bring this down further so you can see it better. And I'm just going to dip it in to the water, give it a little shake out onto the floor. Wipe it with some paper towel. Flip it around. And do the other end. See the little frays hanging off on the edge. But I'm going to trim off the edge and it's not going to be shorting out at all. Put in the water again. Shake off. Soak off the excess water. Put it back on the paper clip. Do it again. Now we're going to do each side three times. So this is number two on this side. And what this is doing is just building up a nice coating of carbon. And by heating and quenching, it does oxidize the wick very well three times has always been very very good for me wipe it off with the paper towel we'll do the other side now this is number two on this side other people's processes might be different this is what works for me Okay, throw it into the water. One more time. And this will be number three on this side. Now, some people don't use the paper towel to wipe off the excess water. I notice it takes a lot longer if you don't wipe it off with the paper towel. So it's always good to just soak up the excess water with the paper towel and then put it back into the flame. And there's number three on that side. Shake off the water, wipe it off with the paper towel, flip it around, and number three on this side. Okay. There we go. Put that in the rag. Turn this off. And take this out of here. Alrighty, folks. So here is. Oop, drop my paper clip. Here is a little piece of paper towel. A fully oxidized, uh, heated and quenched. I should say, uh, wick. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some e-liquid, 
shake it up. I just have some Happy Ease Summer Summer Grape Lemonade 18 milligrams juice. Shake it up. You can use any liquid or any PG juice or any any if you're using VG that's fine. Take the water out of here also. Now what I do is I use the paper clip for this also. And I'm gonna take the liquid, hold it still, and just put a few drops on all the way down. Turn it around, make sure it gets really soaked in. Then I'll take a regular lighter and burn off the e-liquid. Okay, now I like to do this three times. This gives, whoa! <laughs> Make sure all the flame is out before you do that. I like to do this three times. This gives it a nice coating. Of the e-liquid onto the mesh. And it'll cause it not to, uh, won't allow it to short out. Here's number Okay. Okay. So there you go, folks. There is the fully oxidized Zenesis Standard Wick. Alrighty. Now I'm going to show you how to put that in and wrap a coil. Alrighty, folks. Now that the uh, wick is fully oxidized, rolled, and oxidized, now I have a fully disassembled Zenesis Standard. Now this is not the way it will come from Zen, but I am just uh, taking it apart and I took it apart and wanted to show you exactly the ins and the outs of the switch and everything that the Zenesis standard has to offer. First off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the switch together. Um, this is the threaded stainless steel knurled part of it. Uh, it's a basic uh, threaded with a, I believe it's like a Delran, um, I don't know what you want to call it, insert into this piece. Very nicely machined. These threads are so nice. They go on so smooth. They're very, unlike no other threads I've ever, ever um, experienced with any other device. Very, very nice. But this is the top part. And this is the button part, which you would be pushing to activate the switch. It's threaded in that hole in there. And there's a little groove in here. Now, what that little groove does, you notice that there's no springs out here, but there are three magnets. Now, they're very strong magnets. Okay. Here's a big one. A rather large size and then there's two of the same size ones. Now how this goes together is these two go together like this and they go into the bottom of the switch into that little groove in there. I'm going to set this down and I'm going to grab the other magnet and a little Phillips head screw 
and a spacer washer. Now the spacer, wa spacer washers, um, a few of them come with the Zenesis. Uh, I only have one in there right now. I believe this is how it came. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in this side of the top switch. Now on the bottom section, I am going to figure out, I'm not going to make the magnets pull to each other, but I'm going to turn it around the other way so it actually pushes it away. And that's the side I want facing the bottom. So what I'm going to do is put the switch in, or put the magnet in that way. So now, when I grab the bottom part, and I push it, you could actually see the magnets moving in there. When I put it together, I'm going to screw this, to start the screwing in, screw it all the way down, and now when I push down on it, the, mag, the magnets, uh, magnetic force pushes it away from each other, which acts like a spring. So what I'm going to do is take a little s screwdriver and just tighten that up so it don't come loose. So now, when I push onto it, it's going to make connection with the battery. And that is the most mechanical switch there is. Uh, nothing, no wires to break or anything of that sort. Very nice switch. I have no problems with it. Now some people have taken the magnets out and replaced them with uh, springs. I believe that this magnet is, this magnet setup is very easy and very, it works very good. I, I like this switch. So I'm going to put that down. And now I'm going to go to the, the, the main portion of the Zenesis standard. Now this is the tube. All stainless steel, medical grade. Um, very nice machined. Got it dirty, but <laughs> very nicely machined. The threading in there is perfect. You look down the center of there, you can see an Allen screw that's holding the top portion of this hybrid. And then you'll notice, I hope you can see it. I might not be able to see that. But this is number 120. It is nicely uh, electro engraved or onto the center post right there, but very nicely made. Now this is a heavier device. It's not as light as the other devices, but with the weight, it, it's very solid. There's a, an O-ring down here that will be holding the tank on the center to uh, center post in the middle there. Another O-ring up top, and then there's another O-ring that goes onto this little groove. This O-ring cannot be put on until after we put on the tank. And then on the top, you'll notice that there are two Allen screws, one in the center and one for the negative. This is the positive and the negative. You have a fill hole right here, and this will be where your mesh is going, or your wick. So what I'm going to do is take the glass, it's not glass, it's fused quartz, but it's very nice, uh, it's very nice and sturdy. Some people have said that uh, if you drop them on, that these are, these are breaking. I have not experienced this with, this is my first one. I did notice when I got it, it was just like a little, little chip there, but as for that, I had no other issues with this tank. It's fused quartz, very nice. What I'm going to do is just put this on. Actually, what I'm going to do is take a little juice and just give it a little bit on both O rings. Just to make sure that it slides on nice and easy. And push it right down. There we go. Now I can put this O-ring on here. And this O-ring will be holding the top cap. Okay. Put that off to the side for now. 
and the top cap is also the same grade stainless steel with the Zen logo on it. I've got fingerprints all over it. And the air hole. Now they all on the Home of Howie Bread site they sell different size hole top caps. One for a stiffer draw and the regular draw. I have no problem with the regular cap. Very nice. A uh, little airy at the beginning but I got used to that real quick. And then this is the drip tip I'm using. This is from 310 Vapors. It's called the Hourglass. Very nice drip tip. It looks like it was made for the Zenesis. Puts this right in there. And it actually looks perfect. It flows right down in there. Very nice. Put that off to the bottom. Now I'm going to show you how I wrap, wrap the coil. Now what I'm going to do before I do anything is I'm going to trim the bottom of this at a 45 degree angle. Alrighty folks, so I gave that little angle cut. And you can see that right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in to the Genesis. And push down. Okay, make sure this is all loose. Okay, now that I have that in there, I'm going to take my little piece of 32A1 Cantho and I'm going to take a regular lighter and just run it down, get a little red in spot and then just run it down. Do this side. And we're good to go. Now I just like to straighten it out. You'll notice after you heat it with the, the lighter, this um, tends to make it a little stronger. Let me just move this camera. Okay, there we go. Now what I'm going to do is just bend it a little bit right there. It around the negative, run it right over to the wick, and take my oh, wrong one. Okay, just tighten it down now that it's there, give it a nice snug tight. Pull this wick off to the side. Actually, you could take this out for doing this. And just give it a couple of twists and it comes right off. Take your wick, put it back in. I pull it up just a hair so it's not touching the bottom of the. The, the stainless steel down here. So when I have it, I pull it straight up the canton and I start wrapping it around the mesh. One wrap. Now make sure you don't wrap this too tight so it's the, the wire is cutting into the stainless steel mesh. Two wraps. Here's the third, three wraps, four. Oh, I got a little piece of wire in there. Let me just get that. Huh. Alrighty. Pull it right over there. Finger tight that all the way down. 
take the smaller Allen wrench. Nice and tight. Take the excess, give it a little turn, come right off. Now before you put any juice on and test it, I just like to take it right here, right at the top of the positive post, and give it a cut right across. Open that back up, inspect it, grab my toothpick, and just make sure if it's not lined up perfectly, you can make it perfect. So there you go, folks. There's my Rap Genesis standard. I'll take the battery. This is an AW 2000 milliamp hour 18650. Positive end first. Put it in. Put the switch on. Smooth threading. Tighten it right down. Grab the juice, put a couple of drops on here. Give it a fire. Keep our fingers crossed. Okay, I noticed that it's getting a little red in here. Now I grab this um dental tool here. What I like to do is because it's like straight from the positive post right over to the wick what I do is take this dental tool and just push it in so it's touching the wick a little bit more that seems to help a lot with them little red spots little red hot spots right there try this again it looks pretty good over there I think we're good so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my syringe filled with juice now this is that grape lemonade juice put it in there and fill it right up Alrighty folks, there it is. So now you'll notice it is vaping very well. Let's put the cap on. When you're doing this, make sure you're doing it very diligently and you don't just put it on very sloppy. I have a tendency sometimes to hit the coil and the wick and then I just line up the air hole directly with the wick and we're all set. So there you go folks. There's the Zenesis. Okay folks, so there you have it. There is the wrap coil and a filled tank. Well, about 75 or three quarters of the way filled. Um, Zenesis standard. Uh, I know a lot of people might be saying that's a lot to take in and it's way too much for me. It's really not that hard to wrap a coil or to roll a coil and wrap the uh, wick and, or wrap the coil around the wick <laughs> but it's really not that hard. I do it in like less than 10 minutes off the camera. I was explaining and once you're doing it by yourself and it, it's really not that hard to do. Um, I have a few wicks all set up, and if I wanted, to, if I needed to change one, uh, I could change it in three minutes. It's not that big of a deal. But anyhow, um, the Zenesis standard is a spectacular device. It is very high quality, very hefty. Um, this device does not go outside. <laughs> this one stays indoors only. Uh, one thing I would say that is not my favorite thing about the Zenesis is that it's not that pocket friendly. 
Uh, I, the one time I did put it in my pocket, the cap, the top cap, fell off, and I ended up screwing up the coil. And um, it's not a device that you want to lay down. Uh, the juice will leak out through the fill hole or through the wick. Um, the switch is not very pocket friendly. There is no locking mechanism. You can give it a few turns and then it won't fire. But um, I choose not to put this in my pocket. I choose to keep it in a little holder that I have on the desk. And that's where it stays. And I vape it while I'm at my computer. And I love it over there. Um, the design of this Genesis hybrid is very, very nice. I mean, the quality is very high grade. The machining is perfect. Um, I can't say enough about Mike over at House of Hybrids, the owner of the, or Zen, I should say. Um, he is an awesome guy to deal with, to talk to. Very, very down to earth guy. And the guy is intelligent. He, he really knows his stuff. You know, he didn't just grab a, a round piece of stainless steel and just start uh, machining it, and this is what he came up with. He put his thought pattern into this thing. This thing really is nice. Let me show you how it vapes. <clears throat> You know, sometimes when you get like that little, not so much vapor, it means that the juice is filling up and flooding where it's sizzling where the, the coil is. What I do is just either push it down towards the ground or just turn it around. I mean, you can see the vapor. A lot of times, the way you're holding it might be flooding the wick. Um, a lot of people think that you have to like tip it upside down to, to wick the, you know, to wick the juice down. I really have not had that issue. I see people flipping them right upside down. Um, I don't do that. I don't need to do that. I the way I make this wick seems to be wicking perfect. The only thing, if anything. Um, I get too much juice up there sometimes. So, like I showed, like I said, I'll turn it around and vape it with the wick on top. And the vapor is there. Um, throat hit is perfect. Uh, if you take the top cap and spin it where the hole the air hole is not directly above or over the um, wick and hit it that way it's a little stronger throat hit but the vapor production is less <clears throat> I choose to have it right over the wick it hits perfect for me <clears throat> the way I wick it is just by holding it parallel to the ground. And it hits perfect. I suggest this device, um, and I don't suggest this device. I suggest it to any vapor that is interested in getting involved into the Genesis atomizers because it is very high quality but I don't suggest this device to new vapors um, this might turn them off to Genesis atomizers because it's not 
Genesis atomizers are sort of, it takes a lot of tinkering. It, it, and you don't have to. I don't, I don't even touch this. Once I set a coil, I don't touch it. I, I can vape a, a coil um, a month and then maybe rewrap the coil, but I'll leave the wick in there. Just rewrap the coil, vape it another month. But I don't, I don't fiddle with it. But in the beginning, when you're setting it, when you're wrapping the coil, it can take a little bit to get used to, to figure it out. Um, why am I getting so many hot spots? Uh, I mean, I wrapped that coil, went pretty well. But I have had times where it was a pain in the butt to, to, get, it, to get the hot spots gone. And, but this device is top of the line. I mean, the quality is, is great. I, I don't have to tell a lot of you out there that are watching this. Um, I'm sure you've seen other videos on the Zenesis, but I'm very happy to own number 120. I hope this is not my only Zenesis. Um, I actually do have a Zenesis z Pro coming, and I will be doing a video on that really soon. But um, this is a spectacular device. Spectacular. The weight is a little heavy, but... I don't have no problem with it. Um, I mean, what can I say about the Zenesis? It, it's just a great product. Uh, Michael over at House of Hybrids is a great guy to talk to. He's a great guy to deal with. Um, the problem is that you have to wait forever to get one of these. Um, I suggest if you are interested in purchasing a Zenesis, go on the thread that I'll leave a link down below. Um, to the famously known Zinfandels. Um, you know, you got to go there and introduce yourself and get involved and you'll see when they're coming on sale and, and when um, Zen will be putting more on his site. And I mean, it took, I didn't just go to the site and add this to my cart. It took me a while to get to it. I bought this on the last midnight sale and it wasn't that easy to do because the site crashed, too many people were there, and then there was people sabotaging, and, and it wasn't a pretty thing. But I was very lucky and I did get one, um, but they're not easy to get. So, you know, check them out, houseofhybrids.com, and uh, on the ECF forum is the link down below. And go there and check them out. Uh, Zen is the standard, everybody. Let me show you a couple more vapes. Very nice. I mean, check them out. If I forgot anything, I'm sorry. Um, what I would like to say is that I'm going to be doing or hosting a show <clears throat> over on Elixir TV on Saturday nights at 6 o'clock, 6 to 8. And I'll be talking about the Genesis. I'll be talking about other Genesis atomizers also. So stop over, um, check it out. Everybody, be nice to one another and keep vaping.